Hello and welcome to the channel. I'm on the today. We'll review the debut album by the. What are they? I would just call them a rock band for now. The the classic rock band, The Cars, and I will review their debut album, self-titled, The Cars. Um, the Cars are a. I'm pretty sure a Amer American band. I'm not even on their fucking page right now. The Cars don't don't do that front. He's actually really warm right now. I'm enjoying his company. Uh, the Cars album uh, came out in 1978. It was um, recorded in February. February, there you go. I cannot say that word. But you've heard me. Um, it was released on June 6th. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go there. <laughs> I should really just stop uh, trying to call, like, you know, or trying to correct myself or something because no one gives a shit. Um, yeah, it came out in 1978, like I said, the album is labeled as a new wave album, uh, power pop and synth rock. Uh, this album was requested, like, I believe, almost a year ago. I'm, I'm pretty sure over a year at this point. And I decided to do it because I was like, oh, you know, um, um, why, why did I do it again? <laughs> why did I do it again? Um, I did it because, um... You know, there's like one person on all music that really uh, has a, you know, a critical taste for music, you know, in mainly in rock and metal. Um, yeah, just just in rock and metal, some folk and electronic, but that's kind of it, honestly. But um, he or she, I don't know what it is, um, rated this album five stars and, you know, called it just a, a stellar record or something, something like that. Um, uh, or a, a stunner, yeah, yeah, a stunner. Um, yeah, pretty infamous, um, pretty infamous user on that side, but um, he or she rated his album of five stars. So I was like, oh, let's check it out, it must be good because he is never really wrong about his ratings, though. his ratings are really dead on. So, um, yeah, I think he is a great guy on there. Um, yeah, so. Uh, most people rate this album four stars, and all music rated it five stars, and yeah, everyone just rates it four stars, and the Rolling Stone album guy rates it four and a half, but Rolling Stone himself gives it four star. They're 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 fucking logic. Like I never got that. The album guy and Rolling Stone just normal. I never got that. But maybe they're two different critics. I don't know. Like it always looks so contradicting to each other. Like Rodison gives four and four and a half stars. Like it doesn't make any sense. Um, I've not a lot to say about this album because it kind of speaks for itself. I only have nine minutes, I'm pretty sure, so I don't ha really have a lot of time. A uh, good times roll. Just a good fun song. Uh, just really like catchy, enjoyable. Just opens up the album pretty nicely, uh, and it kind of goes from there. Kind of makes the ball rolling. Then we have My Best Friend's Girl, uh, just kind of a tongue-in-cheek song, it's literally the same length as the last one and the next one too, which is uh, Just What I Needed, which is um, pretty much the most classic song of this album, Just What I Needed, just a really catchy uh, guitar riff, um, just throughout the whole song, Just What I Needed, you know, that, just a really classic song, uh, really enjoyable, definitely the best song of this band, I would say. I, I've never really heard a better song from them, but I don't think they're gonna make a better song, but maybe, I don't know. But probably not. I mean, this song was great, I really liked it. Uh, definitely my favorite track of the album, without a doubt. And my favorite car songs. And this is actually, all these three, these first two, three tracks are all three minutes and 44 seconds, so good. Do, do something with that, I guess. And then we have I'm in touch with your world. Um, and I have to say though, after just what I needed, I kind of lost some interest with this album, but that's not to say that it goes downhill or something. I just kind of, you know, I was like, how, how are they going to top this? And they didn't really do that, but they did make a really stellar record right there. Um, yeah, just um, fun, three and a half minutes long. You know, finally the first song is not three minutes and 44 seconds. Still fun, still enjoyable. Uh, Rick Okazek is back on the vocals again, but it's kind of ironic though that he is like, you know, he is on all the, you know, he, he is the singer on all the song, on all the songs except for the best song. <laughs> it's kind of ironic. Uh, then we got Don't, Ch Don't Just Stop, 
kind of a dumb title, but this was a really fun song. Uh, really catchy riffs, really just a really addictive guitar line um, towards the middle section, uh, or throughout the whole song really. Just a really fun song, I thought. Um, really hard to put off, I would say. Really hard to turn off, because it's such a fun song, it's such a banger. A uh, really great track, close outside too, pretty perfectly. Then we have You're All I've Got Tonight. Um, this is actually the last track that Rick, Oke Rick Okazak does for this album. Uh, the rest is all by Benjamin Orr, who does the Just What I Needed song. And uh, I have to say though, you know, this is definitely a good song, really greatly written and just uh, classic all around. But if you hear all the Benjamin Orr songs, they're definitely better than uh, Rick Okazak, I would say. Just really just sublime stellar tracks over him, I would say. So there's that. Good song, but I, I think it's just getting better from there, so there you go. Uh, then we get Bye Bye Love, which is kind of like, a, kind of a cheeky, kind of cheesy song uh, about the obvious. Um, yeah, it's still not necessarily a bad song, I still really enjoy it, but it's definitely a bit too cheesy for my taste, just, uh, just a bit too coo cookie cutter. This whole album really a bit too cookie cutter, but um, yeah, essentially the whole album is like that, so that I can't really blame them for that. Then we have Moving in Stereo, which is actually co-written by Greg Hawks and Rick Ocasek. So th this actually has the most members on it, because usually Rick Ocasek writes all the songs, but now uh, three members, or uh, yeah, yeah, two members uh, co-wrote co it together. So Moving in Stereo sounds definitely way more diverse, I would say. Actually the longest song of this album. Um, there is a lot of like studio uh, fuckery going uh, going around on this track, so they're definitely kind of experimenting on the song, and I really enjoyed it. I thought it was a really uh, good touch from them, really uh, fun. Um, yeah, just a, a lot of like interesting sounds on a really simple record. That's really interesting, I think. So definitely um, keep an ear out for this song because I think it definitely. Um, was just a really interesting, fun song, and it's the longest song on the album too, so... That also, also has a bit of bias uh, for me at least, so there you go. Now we have All Mixed Up, which actually reminds me of the song that um, that Mark uh, Koselek did for Red, Red House Painters, which I've, I fucking love the band. Um, Red House Painters, I believe, covered this song later um, on... Songs for a Blue Guitar, yeah, yeah, that album, and all mixed up at a music video, and I believe this this was the song they did on that album, so uh, that's something, I guess. So, there's that, um, I think it's enjoyable, it's a, it's a good song, uh, but it just, like, I'm pretty sure it's a, it's a cover, and I, I never saw the credits as in it's a Cars cover on the Red House Painters album, but it's, I, I'm pretty sure it is. So, all mixed up, it's a good song, but whenever I hear it, I just want to listen to Red House Painters. In my opinion, a way better band, but... I mean, that's not to say that the Cars are bad, though. The Cars is a great band. The Cars is fucking dope, but... Um, they're not necessarily my kind of band, because they are kind of like a new wave, kind of... Are they post-punk? Not post-punk, but they are arguably the first pop-punk bands. Uh, they are power pop and synth rock, so I do enjoy their sound, but they also have some new wave, uh, you know, fuckery going on. And, I mean, their album covers are fucking awful. I mean, this album cover, like, it was the main reason for me not covering this album, because it had, it, it has an awful cover, I think. Like, what the fuck is that? I don't, I don't know. But, I mean, the album is great, though. I think this album is great. I really enjoyed it. Uh, I'm gonna give it a 9 point... I'm gonna give it a 9.4 out of 10. I think it is a really great album. Um, yeah, so, well, it's a bit too high, I think. I'm gonna give it a 9.2 out of 10. There you go. So, that's the rating. Uh, that's the rating. I think it's a really enjoyable album. Let me know what you think about it in the comments down below. What do you think about the cars? Love, love them, hate them. Uh, I definitely like them, though. I really like them, but I'm not necessarily the biggest fan of their sound. But it is, you know, it is a good album. I can't deny that, so. Let me know what you think about it in the comments down below. Um, I've been Ominous, I will see you in the next video. Like and subscribe to the channel for videos like this one. And yeah, like I said, up until the next one. Peace.